Hello everyone and welcome back. In this part of the tutorial series, we're going to take our sculpted detail from ZBrush and bring it back into Maya. We'll utilize Maya's quad draw function to retopo the model and create an optimized game res mesh. We will also look at unwrapping that optimized mesh so that we can start the texture baking process in the next video. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, as you know, from our last video, we used a lot of polygons to create this nice sculpt and all this fine detail. So typically what we want to do before we export that mesh straight from ZBrush and bring it into our tool that we're going to use to retopologize it, what we want to do is something called decimate the mesh. So ZBrush has a plugin called Decimation Master and in it what we can do is we can knock the poly count down significantly and still retain all the necessary detail in the areas that we need to um, to kind of get this nice high resolution model. So what we're going to do is in ZBrush we have our subtool selected and I'm just going to do some cleanup. Let's rename this one Gravestone HP. And let's go ahead. We don't need these old things. So if I saved an iteration, so I can actually, oops, not delete all. Start cleaning up my scene just a little bit. So I'm going through and deleting these old subtools. And so now this is what I'm left with. I don't need this subtool anymore. I think this is my old one. Um, so I'm cl cleaning up the tools too. This can sometimes make your ZBrush scenes kind of hefty. All right. So I'm left with my, my model, my high resolution sculpt, and I want to decimate it. So I'll go to Z plugin and the decimation process has two phases. You have to pre-process your subtool and you have to also, once you do that, you can then decimate it by a percentage. So what I'm going to do is hit pre-process current. And sometimes this can take a long time um, depending on how many polys your high poly meshes. Um, so this is going to take a, a few minutes, maybe like up to 10 minutes it could, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and when it's done, I'll show you what we'll do after. All right. So once the pre-process, um, is done, you'll get a sign up here and it just went away when I start recording again. It said, um, com is it task is complete. And for this example, it took about five minutes. So that's actually not that bad. So once it goes through and does the pre-processing, we can go back to Z plugin. And we can decimate current. But before that do that, we could set up a target poly count or a percentage to decimate. I think default it's set to 20. Let's take it down to 10. Let's see if we can get it down to 10 or close to 10. And I'll hit decimate current. And since it pre-processed, the actual decimation doesn't take too long but you can see I went from 8 million active points down to about a million active points if I zoom in it's still giving me a little bit of artifact um, but honestly I think I can live with that I don't expect to get s that close with this model the closest I'll probably get is like right here I'm not really gonna focus in on the detail but, I mean, if that was uh, not acceptable for your project, what you can do is you can go back, you can control Z, um, just don't do it twice. Um, and then you can do, uh, change your settings, so maybe we can do like 12%. And I'll just hit decimate current. And since we did the pre-processing phase, uh, we can test out these different decimation levels. So I'm at 1 million polygons now, and it's still kind of um, kind of pixelated a little bit in some of these uh, areas where the detail gets super fine. But 
for my purposes, that's probably okay. Uh, if we wanted to, we could undo one more time, though, and go back to Z plugin, our decimation master, and maybe we just do something like 15%. And the reason why I'm doing this is uh, because I just know um, in in Maya when I use this as my surface to retopple on top of, uh, the more polygons it has, the slower it could be. And it, it kind of depends on your system's hardware, right? Uh, but I think I think this is good. So we'll roll with it. All right, so now I'm going to export this and bring it back into Maya. Before I do that, um, I want to show you guys, I, I did clean this up, uh, but I left one of the bases here. Um, and this is okay. I, I would normally delete that because I don't want to save it. But when I go to Z plugin, export, you want to make sure you're only exporting this so this is where some of the export settings do come in handy because if I did all it would kick out that other subtool along with my gravestone HP subtool so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to do export selected uh, and I have this subtool selected and I'll hit export and I'll go ahead and export it as gravestone underscore HP and I'll hit save I already saved it so just overriding it and this shouldn't take too long um but you can see here it's thinking but once this saves out what we'll do is we'll hop back into maya and then we will import it into maya So here we can see the subtool is exported, and that's how we know it's done. It, it, it's complete. So this only took about two minutes to export, um, but we should be in good shape. So before, I would just save this. I would just go ahead and delete that last subtool that was in there um, so our scene isn't as dense. So now let's jump over to Maya and start retopologizing. Okay, so I'm back in Maya. Let's go ahead and just import that sculpt. So I'll go to File, Import, navigate to where I saved it. And it's going to take a second to come in. So you can see the progress bar at the bottom. And it is quite a bit of uh, topology. On that sculpt that we brought in so I probably should have decimated it lower um, oftentimes what I do is I will decimate the um, I have like a decimation that like doesn't hold the detail as well and that will be my mesh that I actually use to retop a one and then I might kick out a higher resolution one that's decimated at a higher percentage and that will be the one I bake off of just so I know I don't get any artifacting all right, so here's my gravestone HP, so it's named properly. So anytime you're baking, you just want to make sure you're uh, having good naming conventions. Oops. And you can see that decimation, since this is flat, it really saved the poly count on the back. Um, but it is still dense in the front, because that's where most of our sculpted detail is. So what I like to do is sometimes this uh, material that comes in ZBrush is annoying so what I'll do is I'll right click on the object and I'll assign a favorite material and I'll do uh, maybe a Fong material or a blend and that's nice it lets me see the light uh, reflected on there as well so once I, I do that I can select this on an object level and I can hit this icon right here. And what this is going to do is set that surface to live. So now I can use uh, quad draw. And basically what you're doing is you're kind of like tracing the topology on top of this high resolution live surface. So where is quad draw? I'll go to my channel box. Oops, excuse me. I'll go to my modeling toolkit. Uh, symmetry is activated in the X axis. And I'll hit quad draw. 
and all I do is I'm clicking on that mesh. I'm holding shift and I can click and I can create a polygon. So what Quad Draw just did is it created a new object right here called Poly Surface 1. And if I exit Quad Draw, uh, like go to save or exit it, what happens is I'll just make sure I set this high poly one to my live surface again, select our object, um, and hit quad draw. Because if you don't have an object selected and you hit quad draw, it will create a new quad draw instance. So let's go ahead and just retopo this. So the point of retopoing is to basically create a mesh. Um, that we can use in a game engine. So this one that we sculpted is way too detailed to just bring that over into Unity or Unreal. So all I'm doing is when I'm retopologizing, I'm really thinking about the silhouette and optimization so if you need to see what these tools are doing um, in the uh, modeling toolkit we have these keyboard shortcuts and all of the quadra functions are utilizing these shortcuts so the basic what I'm doing is I'm just clicking to place a vertice and then I am holding shift in the middle of those essentially to build a polygon. I have symmetry on. I'm kind of ignoring asymmetrical detail right now because for the most part, this mesh is symmetrical. I will have to turn off symmetry at some point and get like this kind of detail in. Um, something I'm not going to do is like retopo these letters, right? Because that's just detail that I know will bake in nicely. And you'll see when we get there. Um, so it's really about, uh, thinking, thinking about, uh, what you can get away with. Topology wise. So I am doing actually kind of a lot of polygons around here and that's because in the game engine I know I'm gonna see this silhouette so if I don't have enough oops let's do these ones if I don't have enough topology you're gonna see it the the chunkiness in the silhouette so that's why I it's kind of dense right here. Usually cylinders are going to be a little bit more dense depending on where they are. And So yeah. So even that might be a bit too too dense. Uh and then these surfaces are going to be a lot easier because they're kind of like flat surfaces. And I will go in here and add more definition for sure. But right now, it's kind of like when you're when we modeled it, you want to think kind of larger forms and then cut in detail as it's needed. And yeah, retopo is kind of like the nice thing about ZBrush is I really didn't have to think about topology. I just had to think about it in the sense of, oh, I need more resolution to get more detail. Um, but I wasn't really thinking about like edge flow so much in ZBrush, which is nice. So the retopo phase is like we have that form here. We're basically tracing on it. And now we're really thinking about optimizing 
uh, the topology. And for me, like, uh, when we retopo, I will definitely, um, work in quads at first and then start adding, like, triangles because, uh, because quad draw, it, it, like, runs a little bit nicer when you're doing this. Although, I don't want this think here okay so i need to kind of clean up these surfaces a bit more um let's show you guys this so if i hit um uh, i think it's control tab and drag this out we can drag out that whole ring of edges so that's kind of nice um control tab uh middle mouse click i think it's middle mouse click let me double check yeah control tab middle mouse click so that way we don't have to manually place a vert and build the quad so it saves us a couple steps but i do sometimes for something like this you have to go in and just make sure they're landing where you, they need to land, okay? And because we did beat up these edges, it's a little bumpy. Um, but again, I am just trying to make it as clean as possible. What we can do... I think for the back, I'm really going to be less cautious because in this example we're not going to see the back anyway there's not detail in the back um, but we still want to retopo it And so when I grab a vertice, I can um, click and drag it. And then when the icon changes to that red, that means it's going to weld. So like I said, I am just going to weld all these to a point. It should be fine. I think I might have dragged them too low. But we'll see. Um, and then I want edge here and an edge here and one here because I want to make sure I'm capturing that bevel a little bit. It's just going to help the bake better. And really, I should have probably, yeah, I should have did one like back here. Um, but we're not going to see the bake. Uh, So how I did that, I just control shift is delete a, a polygon or an edge. So you can control shift and like select multiple ones. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I like to have a nice edge loop where possible. And then we'll come in and clean it up. OK. 
Okay, so we need one on the inside right here as well. And if you hold shift and you can relax it, obviously I think that's too extreme for that case. Um, but there's good, there might be some instances where you want to relax um, some of the polygons. And so that's how you can do that. And let's kind of go back here. I feel like I say this for every point of the process, but really it does it does well to like take your time with this stuff um to be honest so to cut in an edge i can hold control that places an edge for me And then sometimes if I'm holding shift that that's supposed to bridge, sometimes I'll need to make like a little polygon and then just move it up uh, just because it's having a hard time finding the partner to bridge. So that's kind of my roundabout way to fix that. I need to go in here and just make sure it's closer to the bottom. I think that's okay for now. And again, I am thinking about this in quads for the most part right now, and I can always collapse things into tries a little bit later, later on, if I need to reduce the poly count. Control shift tab and control shift tab. So it's it's a little bit wonky. So yeah, undo. Got to be careful with that. It doesn't like to um scale all the time. So let's just do it this method. And so, yeah, a lot of this is just going to be me. Um, I'm, I think it's helpful to see, like, the whole process, but I don't know how much more talking I'm going to really be doing in here. Because a lot of it is just me making sure I'm getting the silhouette uh, pretty, pretty well covered. Let's, let's do this for the back. So I'm going to have to redo pretty much what I did. And the reason why I uh, collapse these into tries in the back is because e the game engine triangulates the mesh anyway. Sometimes you'll triangulate it before you pr uh, bring it into the game engine. But to triangulate a quad, all you have to do is cut it in half, and that gives you two tries. 
So instead of having this face be, well, these two faces be a total of four tries, if I collapse it like this, that's two tries. So you can see how many polygons I'm saving just by collapsing things into tries. And so that's why I'll do that. Actually, we could this cool. And then you just got to make sure it's welding ever to see. Because we still need all that topology like right here to get a decent silhouette. We will see the, the change in angle on these polygons, but won't be too, too bad. So I know, uh, let's go ahead and break this. So I want to throw one edge here. And I'll break this one. Oops. Because I want to throw one edge here. And we're just trying to capture this silhouette. Did I? I could do that. Okay, so let's delete these ones. And the reason why I'm deleting these is because I don't want the... um the edges to like continue to go into weird spots on the uh, other areas of the model. In here. <sighs> okay. Uh, let's keep that for now. I think we're looking. I think we're looking pretty good. I think I can't. I'm I'm thinking about how the connection is from here to here, and sometimes in the bake, it's nicer to give it a, a bevel. So maybe I'll do that. Just give it one face to help the bake out a little bit. Because even though this one is going to be lower resolution, it's the only part, it's the only object we're going to have, um, obviously, because <laughs> we're just creating one asset. But I'm I'm just gonna give it a little bit more topology. We could definitely go lower, but I want to make sure I'm capturing a lot of this uh, detail. So let's turn off Quadra and just want to see what it's looking like. So we got a total of 650 tries. That's not bad. My goal is to. Make sure it stays somewhere around a thousand, I think. Uh, but we're getting nice. I think I think we're getting a nice shape. Okay, let's go back into Quadra. And I do need to at least build an inner lip going on at the bottom. I think these are just spread out too far. These need to be like closer. So yeah, anytime uh, you're retoppling, it's it's kind of you're still thinking about like capturing the silhouette, getting good edge flow. But really, I find I can typically shut my brain off a little bit and just throw on a nice podcast or or some some music when I'm doing uh retapo stuff. Hmm.
So yeah, we're about 22 minutes into the retopo process. Not too terrible. Whoa, that totally welded somewhere, somewhere else. Come on. Do that. There we go. Okay, so we got that lip in at least. Uh, do I want... I think I want one here too to get this... This lip where the uh, main part of the tombstone kind of meets the the vertical part the uh the vertical part meets the horizontal base rather he's got really close to it maybe we need one in the inside but i think i'm gonna leave it okay Let's see if we can use our control tab. Eh, kind of works. Let's go in there. Try to make sure these ones are evenly spaced. What we could do is we could use the... Uh, circularize function um but i don't know if we get out of quad draw circularize uh and shift it just gotta be careful if you use this circularize and shift it select that inner one circularize and i think that one might be good so now if we go back into quadra let's see what it's doing so yes yeah, sometimes you can use like out of like uh these other tools that we used in the the first video to um Retopologize and snap it to the the mesh, and that will that will help. I think I'm gonna put one here and one here. Eh, let's undo that. It will come up. So what I can do now is like right here, I can start making some triangles. And here I can even start making uh, some triangles. Because this is a flat surface for the most part, so I'm not too concerned. I don't think I'll get too many issues. But maybe we'll do that. And let's look down here. Maybe we'll just do two tries here. reduce the poly count even further these ones I want to keep 
uh, just because these corners are pretty rounded. Uh, what do I want to do here? I think I want to do some cool, some tries. Looks ugly though, <laughs> uh, but it gets the job done. So maybe we will just can we do ah uh, this is gonna look a little bit better. Okay, and we still gotta put that asymmetrical detail in there. Um, I think we do need like. Yeah, we are going to need some supporting edges, I think, there. So, let's look at this asymmetrical detail. Actually, let's finish the symmetrical detail first. So, let's look at the skull. Um, it's a little bit more challenging just because it's organic, but the same concepts apply. I am looking... Pretty much thinking in quads for this, just because that's how I'm used to doing for more organic shapes. And you can use like these, um, that blend, that fong and blend material, uh, in Maya. You can use those to help help you figure out like where you are on the object which is pretty nice oops we'll do more on the inside i guess Okay, that's conforming to the, the silhouette rather nicely. So yeah, the trick here for me is definitely going to be trying to keep it relatively low res. Um, let's do one right there. There we go. And I'm not too concerned about like making sure this stuff lines up. I'm I'm I am looking at the density of my retopology on on the skull. But I can always like finagle stuff a little bit to get it to hook up right to this inner uh loop. Look at 
this middle one. Just something like that. And this silhouette, although it is important, it's a little bit less important because it's like sunken in a bit. But let's do, let's do one more here, I think. So yeah, sorry I'm not saying too much. I'm just basically <laughs> repeating myself at this point. But like I said, I just wanted to show the whole process of Retapo. Just because it is a little bit weird. And it's a lot of um, doing it a few times. And then you kind of get used to what you need to do. So now this is a good point to show holding shift to kind of relax it a bit. That can be helpful. I think that's good. Let's do one more ring in here, I think. Getting nervous for my, my goal. Um, but that's okay. Luckily, we have symmetry, so we're, like, cutting our work in half, which is super nice. So what I can do is uh, get out of quad draw just because I know I'm going to just basically um, snap these. I'll use my extrude tool. And I will select these inner faces and then I'll well merge select it to center. And so I get that. And I can hold shift and kind of smooth that a little bit but I think I was too heavy-handed with the shift so let's do that so yeah you can just see how I bop bopped out of quad draw and use like some basic uh, modeling tools What is my polygon count at, though? Oops. It's 300, so I'm, I'm definitely going over 1,000. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That is okay. I'm putting in more, probably more detail than I, I need to. Let's see if I can... Yeah, it is kind of tedious, but again, I tend to find retopology like not too crazy. Um, and what you might also find as well, your first time retopoing is you might find you'll have to go back and after you retopo, uh, you bake it. You'll probably find some baking issues, so you might have to come back to this phase. But 
There's nothing too wrong with that. Even to this day, I will go and find some some issues and need to tweak either my UVs or just the retopple a little bit. Don't think I need that, so we'll keep these ones big, but try to cut down. Ah, uh, this spot is going to be a little bit challenging just because how I sculpted it. That. Need more resolution here? I do. Yeah, this is <laughs> requiring a little bit. And again, I am zoomed in, so when I could have probably left it, but I think I want to try to capture more of that, that silhouette when you're looking at it from, like, right here. Just make sure that cheekbone, I'm getting the detail I want from it. Even, like, here, I'm losing out on quite a bit of detail. All right, now it's getting tricky just because we're like underneath the model. Let's do hmm. Okay. I'm going to try to keep these teeth super low res um, for the sake of time and my poly count. 
we will see how this goes. Let's see. Save it, and immediately I'm going probably higher resolution than I need to. So yeah, even though retopology, it seems like I'm I'm like f just free balling a lot of stuff. I am like trying to make a conscious effort to make sure like this repeating kind of detail is making sense. Like the the same kind of technique I used between these two teeth, I'm making sure I do it between these teeth as well. So I and there is a method to the madness a little bit. It's so like here I can see I'm going to need more. But from far away, it probably reads well. I think I'm going to need just one more edge here to really start getting the, the shape of the tooth down. Um, ooh, and that's coming out kind of far. Let's do that. But I think that's going to be easy to get that edge in there. Let's do this. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put this here so I can delete these. Yeah, I think this is looking better. It's capturing the shape of the tooth better. And really, we could probably go lower. But... I think this is going to give us a better result, ultimately, uh, when we go to bake. So... And what we can do... Hold on, let me step back. It looks like when I turn here, I'm like, I have this kind of lip, not lip, but detail coming out. So I'll just move these down. I will actually use this. There we go. 
Uh, that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be fun to do. So now let's start seeing how we can start uh, welding this to. Uh, Luckily, oops, I don't know why I did that. There we go. So real quick, now that I'm thinking about it, um, make sure you save. <laughs> you don't know when mine's going to crash. I've put in, like, uh, a lot of time so far. So I want to make sure I, I'm saving. So let me go ahead and save. Baby topo. And save. Okay, go back into Quadra. Oh boy. Okay. So I'm probably just going to be re really sloppy in here, I think, but we'll make we'll make do. Actually, I'm going to start. I am personally hoping we won't see. I don't think we should see like too much of this. Um It's not as pretty as I would like it for sure. But I I'm hoping it turns out pretty okay. Oh man, we gotta get two, we're going from two polygons. Actually, let's not bridge those ones, cause we can do. 
this. And we'll just we'll just try these bad boys. will let us maybe hmm Okay, get out of Quadra. Let's isolate this. You can see right right now the teeth uh they don't match up and that's what I'm I'm thinking about is like trying to match the curvature, but I think it's going to bake okay. Z. Oh, it looks like I'm not welding this stuff nicely. Yeah, that's why. Okay, so just select, turn off symmetry for a second, and I am going to weld to center and weld to center. And I'm guessing this didn't weld. Nope, it looks like it did. Symmetry X. Uh, can I just cap this? No. Did on that side, but not that side for some reason. So let's go back to Quadra. Why is it being difficult? Who knows? Oh, buddy. Okay. It's actually not looking that bad. Um, we are higher than I want it to uh, in our poly count, for sure. That's okay. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start carving in detail for like this asymmetrical stuff, uh, carving in the asymmetrical detail, uh, right here and right here. So let's turn off symmetry. Let me unhide my, my poly, uh, live surface. And let me go to Quadra. Oops. Oh, it's because I have a uh, wireframe. Oops, wireframe on. Okay, Quadra. So this is going to be a little bit challenging. Uh, nothing too crazy. I'm going to throw an edge loop right here. Uh, and maybe we do like put some of that detail here. And even here, it's pretty beat up. So I have symmetry off, and I'm going to delete these faces. Those are the ones I'm going to be editing heavily.
Okay, and again, I just want to make sure it's affecting, doing something interesting to the silhouette. That's my primary goal. Oh, let's kind of clean this up too. We don't need quads here. We can... We could do something like that. we could just collapse them since we don't need them as much on the inside. I think that's the better solution. So this might be overkill, but um, I think we're going to get some interesting things going on in the silhouette. And so this, uh, I, I'm just going to bake this on a flat surface since you don't really, won't be at an angle to see the effects of like uh, retoppling a lot of this fine detail. Um, let's see, we might be able to do, I don't like how that looks. Okay. This is where it's going to get crazy for sure. So once we get this. And I don't need to capture this detail a hundred percent again the whole reason i'm doing this is so i can get an interesting silhouette going on here Let's do this. Can try here. Okay, that's looking interesting. Uh, it looks like we need a little bit more definition here yeah, it looks like it's actually really there
So yeah, I'm really just looking at the uh, shape of this and trying to capture it. So you still get some interest in the the low poly. And I will toggle that. And the bake, you, you can actually get away with, like, the bake is going to do a whole lot of favors for us. And it's surprising how much detail you can just leave leave up to the bake to, to capture. But again, it's like, we just want to make sure capturing, like, this big gap. And I'll probably do this one and then call this video good because this is a really long video. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll re I'll like finish this one and then I'll kind of maybe add some more asymmetrical retopo detail in. Uh, but for the most part, this is what we're gonna do. The same kind of concept is what we're gonna do for the other ones. So you won't missing too much and maybe we'll do this Cool. Now it's just playing the game, getting this stuff relined up. Um, I'd probably add, yeah. That's why I think we need that. And we can add that detail. So what I'm going to do is, because this is a long video, um, I'll finish this up and then we'll conclude that video. Uh, so in the next video, what we'll do is, once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and unwrap it. So we'll start a new video for the unwrapping. So this is all I have for this video. Um, but I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to finish up the retopology. Uh, and then we'll look at unwrapping. So see you guys in the next video.